This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about Bitcoin being under attack again. There are a lot of new developments on the regulatory and legislative fronts that I want to cover in one video. The big news is that we're waiting for an executive action from the White House, from the Biden administration. They're preparing this executive order and it should be coming down the pike in a few uh, weeks from now. And we've really, this is interesting because in the U.S. we've gone from this point just a few years ago where regulators and politicians were saying no one uses Bitcoin, it's a complete joke, to now we're at that point where people, especially politicians and regulators, are saying, wow, Bitcoin is actually looking pretty powerful, must try to capture. But Bitcoin, of course, is extremely decentralized. It's very, very tough to capture. So what it looks like they're doing is they're going after more low-hanging fruit like stable coins and DeFi. We should have this executive order in a few weeks. It will be an, an order that helps to coordinate these various uh, regulatory groups on crypto regulation. So the White House National Security Council, State Department, Treasury, National Economic Council, Council of Economic Advisors. And then once this comes out, those different government agencies will have three to six months to come up with proposals. So this is something we don't know that much about, but we do know that the White House is taking a very close look at crypto. There's one hypothesis that the administration's goal is to basically capture and neuter stable coins by forcing them into the hands of, uh, of the big U.S. banks. This is, uh, if you read this article, I'll link to called Snow Job, very interesting article, and it contends that Janet Yellen and Elizabeth Warren are the main politicians behind this regulatory push. It's not Gary Gensler. Also includes a clique of uh, Federal Reserve veterans, so all the usual suspects, the central bankers and the rent seekers like Yellen and Warren. This is mostly, as I said, it looks like mostly an attack on stable coins will force these regulated companies like Circle and Paxos into the arms of big banks. So these will probably end up getting acquired by JP Morgan or Bank of America or Wells Fargo or something like this. So this is a form of regulatory capture. And if this happened, at least according to that article, it would be under, uh, it would all take place under the, the uh, control of the OCC and the FDIC, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency and the FDIC. Uh, in this article, they quote uh, someone who says that the Biden, Biden administration strategy is to choke the stablecoin market through regulation. The government believes that this can yield new opportunities for tax collection and also slow the growth of the broader crypto market, basically by trying to interfere with how easily traders move between stablecoins and DeFi and other cryptocurrencies. And so if you capture stablecoins, you really have some control over this. Ultimately, I think this matters less simply because we are going to get a central bank digital currency, a Fed coin, a spy coin in the US, and that will really uh, take market share and render these stable coins, even if they're in the arms of big banks, will render them neutered as well. But this is, this is really the progression, and it makes sense that they would go after stable coins. They're already uh, fairly regulated companies, as we said, like uh, Circle and Paxos. Obviously, obviously, they don't like Tether, and they'll probably do their best to try to uh, stop offshore stable coins as well. If you're finding this video helpful so far, sh be sure to hit that subscribe and like button, and maybe share this video with a few friends as well. The next attack is actually coming in a bill out of the House of Representatives. Again, this isn't a law yet. This would give the Treasury sec Secretary and the whole Treasury Department extraordinary powers that they have already, but it would expand those powers in a really sinister way. The bill is called America Competes Act. As I said, it's currently in the House. And the purpose of this bill is to help the U.S. compete better with China, as if members of Congress could, could do anything about this. But they're trying to slip this, uh, this control uh, language into the bill. It would basically give Treasury, i.e. Janet Yellen right now, the ability to block, freeze any financial transaction. Now, she, she and Treasury already have this power, but there's some constraints. There's a public comment period. They have to disclose what they're doing. And this prov provides some checks and balances on Treasury. Under this new language, it would basically bring digital assets under 
the wing of this control, and it would also make it much easier for Treasury to do this without uh, disclosing uh, their actions to the public. This could be used to force crypto exchanges not to allow their customers to interact with the crypto network, like Bitcoin, for example, or Ethereum. It could also be used to block U.S. banks from interacting with crypto exchanges, so you could selectively starve a Coinbase or a Kraken or a Gemini if you wanted to. Again, Treasury already has a form of this power, but it is subject to checks and balances, which of course this bill is trying to uh, remove those checks and balances while also extending this power, as I said, to digital assets like crypto cryptocurrencies. Now, fortunately, there's no equivalent provision in any Senate legislation. And so if this were ever to become law, we would have to get the Senate to agree on it. And then there'd be some reconciliation process and um, then it would possibly become law. I, I don't think this time around it's going to happen. There seems to be a lot of attention on this and the, uh, the Bitcoin lobbying groups are on top of this and the crypto lobbying groups are on top of this. So it's probably gonna be, this language is gonna be struck from the bill, but this really is a warning shot and shows what could, <clears throat> what could take place in the future. There's a great article here from, from Coin Center, which is leading, leading the charge in terms of lobbying, giving an example of if this passes, what sort of power it would give to Janet Yellen. So if, for example, she deemed that either the Netherlands or a Dutch crypto exchange or U.S. crypto exchange, I should add, or even all cryptocurrency transactions validated by a miner outside of the U.S., we can see here where this becomes almost unenforceable as well. Also, this would allow her to target non-custodial wallets, which is what many of us use to store our Bitcoin. Again, this would only be if Treasury was worried that there was some money laundering going on. But of course, these laws, once they're in place, and these powers, once they're in place, can be expanded and abused. And so this would give Treasury the power to make it illegal for any U.S. financial institution, including regulated cryptocurrency exchanges like Coinbase, from maintaining accounts for customers involved with those concerns. So this is this is just tremendous power. They could say basically you have a, a Trezor wallet and because you have this and you're storing Bitcoin there, you're not allowed to interact with Coinbase or any crypto exchange. Again, this language is probably going to be struck from the bill, but this is, this is a scary thing and it does give the government uh, a lot more power than they should have. Finally, I want to talk about there's an amendment that's waking it, making its through over its way through over at the SEC, and Commissioner Hester Pierce is is uh, is voicing a strenuous dissent against this. But this is basically a way of bringing. I'll, I'll link right here to the uh, to the proposal. The basic summary is that it's they're trying to expand the definition of securities exchange, which would normally be like the Nasdaq or the New York Stock Exchange. They're trying to expand this to include automatic market maker AMM protocols like Uniswap and also expand it to DeFi in general. You can see some of the language here. They want to amend the Exchange Act rule to, in this really amorphous way to make it apply to anything that brings together buyers and sellers of securities using trading interest that makes available established non-discretionary -discre methods under which buyers and sellers can interact and agree to the terms of a trade. So the language is very nebulous, and it's nebulous for a reason. It's because the SEC wants to give itself as much power as possible. Unfortunately, this amendment is so badly written that it could actually be interpreted to include things like Block Explorer. So here we have the Blockstream Block Explorer, where you can go through and you can click through and see the uh, the various uh, Bitcoin blocks and the various transactions inside, this could come under the SEC's regulation, which is which is absolutely absurd. Absurd. So it's it's unlikely that this will be this language will be allowed to stand. That being said, it could be targeted, uh, made much more targeted to include AMMs and other DeFi protocols. And so, if you hold DeFi tokens, if you uh, have any governance tokens or other kinds of DeFi tokens, this is really uh, something I would be worried about. And this is what I've been hearing really for the past 12 months as I go on and on and harp about decentralization and about how it's so important. I, I've heard from so many uh, people on this channel say nobody cares about decentralization. We're just trading these things. We don't care. 
and uh, it's just not it's not even on our radar and of course this is true this is like any other emergency you don't care about stockpiling food and water until it's too late and you actually need it likewise decentralization once the government shows its fangs and really comes after you at that point decentralization you're going to want it and people are beginning to figure out as the regulatory screws are tightened that more decentralized protocols like bitcoin are the place to be what we've reviewed today most of these are attacks on stable coins altcoins and DeFi. the screws i expect the screws as i said to continue to tighten bitcoin as uh, as we celebrate bitcoin's 13th birthday in january bitcoin is a teenager now bitcoin has become a formidable opponent to governments to central banks and so we can expect the state to fight back and escalate the, the, the fight. At the same time, there's a parallel uh, adoption force that is pushing the other direction. Politicians are finding out that supporting Bitcoin in particular gets them a lot of votes. So there's a candidate for governor in Texas who is saying that he's going to declare Bitcoin legal tender in Texas if elected. We could see eventually a, cons a consortium of states call it uh, Texas, Wyoming, Montana, Utah, Colorado, etc., that agree to make Bitcoin legal tender. And I think this is really the first move in that direction. You, uh, you can see that he's not too worried about SHIB or Dogecoin or XRP. They are not going to become legal tender. Meanwhile, uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is inviting Bitcoin miners to Texas. And it's, this is now becoming very um, a very public discussion about how Bitcoin mining is actually very good for the energy grid. It's good for the electrical grid and helps to stabilize uh, stabilize the grid, as we've talked about in previous videos. So this is the countervailing force where you have politicians reaching out to Bitcoin, reaching out to Bitcoiners, Bitcoin miners, etc., Bitcoin holders and hodlers, and being friendly to them because they realize that if you appeal to the Bitcoin audience as as it was learned in, in Florida and uh, New York as well, you get votes. Uh, there are a lot of people who have Bitcoin as their main voting issue. And these are people on the left and people on the right. Meanwhile, we have increasing number of politicians, people like Cynthia Lummis, uh, who own Bitcoin and are very active. So as we have the old guard, the Janet Yellens, the Elizabeth Warrens of the world, the Joe Bidens attacking Bitcoin, and again, not a partisan thing. Obviously, Trump hated Bitcoin and told uh, Secretary Mnuchin to try to shut it down, which shows how much Trump understood Bitcoin. You can't really shut it down. But as we have more and more politicians owning Bitcoin, especially younger politicians, we're going to see a generational shift here where the Janet Yellens and the Elizabeth Warrens and the Joe Bidens of the world uh, exit stage left and we have a fresh crop of Bitcoin politicians. And this really is a matter of national security. This is a joke that the White House thinks that regulating and clamping down on Bitcoin is a way to, uh, to enhance national security. What we really have here is we have a global arms race going on where various countries are figuring out how important Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining is. Just yesterday, we had Putin come out or two days ago, come out and say that Russia and, and point out that Russia has a real competitive advantage because of their energy resources in crypto mining. He's talking about Bitcoin mining. He's not talking about Ethereum proof of stake or something silly like that or, or, or XRP. And so this really is, we already have El Salvador uh, having declared Bitcoin as legal tender and starting to build a Bitcoin city and issuing Bitcoin bonds. This is go going to play out on the international stage. And the U.S. can decide whether it's going to be a leader or follower. It looks like for now, the U.S. and legislators and regulators are pursuing a line of attack that will drive this sort of innovation and drive the capital to other smarter countries. But I hope that is not the case. I hope at least at a local level, places like Texas, Wyoming, etc., cetera, that, uh, that, that Bitcoin supporters will continue to grow and fight back against these entrenched interests. Again, this is not a right versus left thing or red versus blue thing. This is the central bankers versus the people. This is the people who have the monopoly on money and use it to create inflation and to steal from you and to apply an inflation tax for you. This is the real enemy. People like Janet Yellen, Elizabeth Warren, and people who are close to the money printers. 
If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.